Good morning. I call to order the 1,755th meeting of the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. The committee will proceed with agenda item four, consideration of reports submitted by states parties under article 18 of the Convention on the Elimination on the of dis all forms of discrimination against women. Today, the committee will consider the sixth periodic report of Eritrea. As you are aware, the procedure for the committee for the consideration of periodic reports is for questions to be posed by a number of experts, following which the delegation will be given an opportunity to respond to those questions. Following that, another group of experts will be given an opportunity to pose questions, and the delegation is again given the floor to respond. The experts' questions will be asked largely following the order of the articles of the convention. This procedure is followed throughout the two meetings for today. We will start with questions relating to Articles 1 and 2 of Part 1 of the Convention. I would first like to give the floor to Ms. Verges for five minutes. Ms. Verges, you have the floor for five minutes. Thank you. As Rapporteur for Eritrea, I would like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome the delegation from the Republic of Eritrea to this constructive dialogue. I would also like to avail myself of this opportunity to commend the stakeholders for presenting the periodic reports under Article 18 of the Convention, as well as for all efforts made so as to combat discrimination and trying to attain gender equality. I would also like to congratulate civil society organizations of Eritrea for their efforts in supporting the preparations for this dialogue. My questions shall cover Articles 1 and 2 of the Convention and Women's Access to Justice. Distinguished Head of Delegation, before I begin, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that according to several sources of information, including reports and inquiries, it seems that the current prevailing situation in the state party is a matter of concern, for we note the following. The convention ratified in 97, which was never implemented. The lack of democratic and operational decisions. Take, for example, the National Assembly, which has not been renewed since it was created during the transitional period. The country has never had free, transparent, and regular elections neither presidential elections nor for the National Assembly nor regional elections. There's also a lack of separation of powers. All of this means that the power is held mainly by the executive and also the office of uh, the public service can be seen as the source of serious violations of human rights in general and for women in particular including sexual abuse, sexual harassment, slavery, torture, rape, arbitrary detention, the violation of fundamental rights, such as political and public rights, the freedom of opinion and freedom of assembly, arbitrary detentions and enforced disappearances, as well as extrajudicial um, proceedings and torture. At the end of the war, which ended in 2018, I would like to ask what is being done so as to cement the rule of law, particularly to defend the rights of women through commitments made with CEDAW. What dates have been set so as to adopt the concession? The preparation process was launched in 2015, and what actions have been taken so as to make this process consensual and inclusive? What provisions have been taken by the state party to implement uh, an operational democratic system by holding transparent and regular elections at all levels, presidential for the National Assembly and regional elections, to ensure the participation of women. What measures have been taken so as to materialize the separation of powers, so as to meet the needs of uh, the rule of law, and to guarantee dignity for the people? When it comes to national services, I would like to ask what actions have been taken for its reform, mainly after the peace agreements, so as to take into account issues such as 
exception cases, the conditions of dignity, and the obligation that you have so as to allow students to freely choose their own studies, the elimination of the obligations for the national service to gain citizenship. And this, revolves, this involves economic, civil, and political rights. Thank you very much, Ms. Regis, for the uh, opening. I will now give the floor to Ms. Nicole Amelin for five minutes. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Chair. So as to ensure that the rule of law is grounded solidly, do you believe that a human rights mechanism is uh, feasible so that an independent commission could uh, inquire the violations of human rights that have transpired in recent years? Thank you very much, Ms. Amadine. I will now give the floor to the delegation to answer the questions posed under Articles 1 and 2 by the two experts on the, on the Convention. Thank you very much. Um, I thank the delegation for the answers, and I'd like to know whether there are any follow-up questions. Ms. Amaline, you have the floor. Ms. Regis, you have the floor. Merci. Thank you, Chair. We have listened to your responses clearly, and we are aware of the history. But what we're concerned about is not the history, but the future, particularly the possibility for your country to embrace uh, rule of law. Madam Vegis. Thank you, Chair. The question I had was women's access to justice, and I believe that question went unanswered. Thank you. So please report on additional measures taken and you are intending to take and in what timeline to hold free and fair elections to the National Assembly and other elected bodies. And can you mention some independent women's association outside this national union you mentioned under Article 3, acting in the different substantive areas governed by the CEDO Convention, which are acting freely in your country and with which you cooperate on implementation of the CEDO outside this union? I had a few questions, too, about um, women in jail or women who have been detained. And many of them do not have access to courts, and many of them are not able to be in touch with their families, and they are not brought to courts. These prisons are prisons with vulnerable conditions. Sometimes they're underground, and their basic bare necessities are not taken into account. There are poor hygienic conditions, uh, sexual aggressions take place and what has been done so as to improve the situation of these women in jails. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wackes. I give the floor to the delegation mm -hmm. to provide responses to the questions on Articles 14, 15, and 16. Thank you. So, um, so we have one request for uh, follow-up. Ms. Regis. Mm -hmm. President. Thank you. With regard to detained women prisoners, I didn't hear any response. What is the state going to do to regularize their situation who has no access to their family or to the courts and for their conditions in the prison, which are, are not appropriate? So what uh, can the delegation give me as a response with regard to these women prisoners? Thank you. 